So a few people commented on my latest video saying that if they cannot really exit the country, what should they do? Uh, and if they cannot find someone to coach them, how can they solve this problem? And then some people also mentioned that uh, with remote work, why is immigration really necessary? And here are my thoughts on this. So regarding immigration, if you cannot really leave your country, you're gonna unfortunately be very limited in the options you have. That doesn't mean that you're gonna be stuck with them for the entirety of your career, right? Entrepreneurship is still an option. So whenever a market does not necessarily have certain solutions, going down the entrepreneurial path after you accumulated a certain level of experience and business acumen is definitely the way to go to introduce some of these, uh, you know, solutions to the market and to get the chance to work on interesting problems. Obviously, that's not as easy and safe as having employment and getting a job, but it's still an option for the folks who are quite ambitious, but unfortunately cannot leave uh, their smaller markets. Now, regarding coaching, if you don't have senior talent in your teams to guide you and maybe share some insights and knowledge with you. I highly recommend joining communities. Often people hear this, joining a community, they think, for example, of a Reddit community. That's an option. Uh, another option would be maybe a Discord server or a specialized Slack server, for example. But the mistake that these people make is that they join and they lurk. They are just passive joiners of the community. They don't see anything happening. They don't ask questions. They don't engage. They never become part of the community itself. They never put in the effort to become part of the community and then they complain oh I'm not getting any value from it you need to add some value first for you to be able to get some value in return and the value doesn't necessarily uh, come out from just asking questions getting answers it's more of a dynamic thing that happens someone uh, some of the benefits I found in being a part of communities and I've started many myself is the fact that someone comes in and they're ranting about some technology and I've never heard of it before so I go and I start exploring it and then I discover something new that I had never really even thought about. And this just added value to me just by the fact that someone came in and just started complaining about something. It doesn't always have to be a Q&A thing. Someone could come in and we can have a debate about uh, technologies. And I've learned plenty from some debates with really awesome people who know way more uh, you know, in-depth uh, information about something that really clarified a lot of misconceptions I had. And by the simple fact that we engaged in a debate, they were able to clarify, you know, a lot of these concepts for me. So this is the added value of a community, not just the Q&A aspect, but the conversational aspect, you know, and the random stuff that could happen out of the blue. Also a shameless plug, I have bi-weekly hangouts with my Patreons who are full partners. And during these bi-weekly hangouts, they bring in the topics and we discuss everything there is about it. And uh, I share all of my experiences with them, my knowledge, my wisdom, all the lessons I've accumulated throughout my career. Now, regarding the last point, which is remote work. Remote work has obviously blown out in popularity during COVID, but we need to make a separation between wishful thinking and what is actually the reality on the ground. The reality is that a lot of companies are pushing employees to go back to offices because whether we like it or not, um, there is something about being in the office that people enjoy. Remote work can be quite intense and can be quite challenging, especially if companies do not change how they work because remote work requires a completely different mindset and a completely different way of thinking about work itself. There's a fundamental change that needs to happen in organizations for them to be able to work remotely. I'm very grateful and uh, you know lucky to be working at GitHub, which is fully remote. We're even shutting down some of our offices. But the reason why we are successful at that is because GitHub has been working remotely way before COVID. And when COVID came in, things just moved on, uh, you know, just like any other day. And we didn't really need to make a lot of adjustments because fundamentally the company understands the value of remote work and it has established the different processes and procedures to work around, you know, people not being available all the time. There's uh, also the judgment of outcome versus the amount of hours you spend on your desk. So nobody at GitHub will ask you, how many hours did you work today? That's... Uh, <laughs> That's a very cringe question, uh, but you're going to be judged based on your outcomes and whether you have, you know, delivered what, uh, what are you promised to deliver. That's why remote work is extremely difficult and a lot of companies opt to go for the simpler solution, which is to put people on desks and they would assume that by the fact that they are in the office, that they are adding value to the company. Obviously for me and my opinion, this is a completely a big misconception. A lot of people waste a lot of time and there's a lot of inefficiencies with commuting to the office, but things are the way they are. And I don't know, maybe in the next decade or two, we will see an entire move uh, towards more remote work. But for now, 
that might not always be an option. If it is an option for you, definitely go for it. But you also need to understand, even with remote work, the further you are away from the headquarters where a lot of the decision making happens, the more peripheral your work is going to be. So a lot of the interesting challenges are still going to be done in the headquarters or as close as possible to the headquarters, right? So that's very important for you to understand. Even in remote work, you need to figure out where all of the decision making is concentrated, which part of the globe that decision making is concentrated in, and you need to be as close as possible to it. That also means that there's another problem with remote work, which is the time zone challenge. So I don't see any company that is established in, the, in San Francisco, for example, being able to work with anyone in Europe, India, or the Middle East. That's a big problem because there's little, very little overlap. I can see companies established more in the East Coast of the US being able to work with Europe and, you know, the Middle East and India, but that's not going to be the case for companies also established in Australia or New Zealand, or you get the point. So if there's very little overlap, remote work will not work, and uh, also your ability to work on interesting problems is going to be severely diminished. I hope this helps.